Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I'm going to be using a bunch of Lawn Fawn products, including the Finley's ABCs and Kohl's ABCs dies, the Milo ABC stamp set, as well as the Mermaid for each other stamps and dies. Starting out with the alphabet dies, and I'm going to be making a card that resembles the Little Mermaid, so I thought it would be fun to create my own greeting that says, Grateful to be a part of your world, which is a play on the part of your world song from the Disney movie, The Little Mermaid. So I've just arranged those dies how I want them, and since I'm using the letters O and R twice, uh, once in the word your and once in the word word world, I used a Q and a P just to get the spacing right. So now I'm going to be using some uh, Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. This is the third and final video in my mini series. And I'm using four different blue colors or greenish colors to create a wave background or kind of like an under the sea background. I'm once again working on some Bristol Smooth paper that I've taped down to a board so that it doesn't warp at all while I'm painting, although I have noticed that the Bristol paper doesn't warp too much when you paint on top, which is really nice. So I'm using my water brush. This is a water brush from Prima. It's the same brush that I've been using all week long in this mini series. And I'm just drawing on some sort of really smooth wavy lines with each color and then going over those lines with the water brush. The way I'm thinking about it is I want the very tip of the water brush to, to touch the top of the drawn line and kind of extend the color down. And once you get going on it, you kind of get a feel for how you want it to be done. Sped up the process just so you can see the entire thing come together, but not have it take too long on camera. And I'm having the colors sort of change from the lightest blue to a little more intense blue, to a green, to, and then all the way to the darkest blues at the very bottom. And as I color each one, I'm also taking the new color that's right below and bringing that up into it. So it's sort of like when you're doing ink blending and you want those colors to overlap. I'm doing the same idea here. I want the colors as they come in to transition to one another. So in order to do that, I need to have them overlap. So I'm adding some more lines in here. And I'm actually making these more defined um, in the process. And it's making it so I get a real pretty wave pattern going. This particular pattern is super easy to do. And you could actually do this with a bunch of other watercolor mediums. But I found that using these markers was super fast and easy. And I think I would prefer doing it this way as compared to some other type of watercolor just because it was so simple to do. Drying that with my heat tool just to make sure everything's completely dry. Then I sprayed some water into the palm of my hand and sprinkled that on. This ink or this watercolor that I've been using is reactive to water once it's been dry. So I'm going to kind of spray on and drop and drop on some water droplets. And then I can take a paper towel and dab up that color and it's going to pull up the color underneath. This is going to give my water scene more bubbles and give it a, a fun texture so that it looks more like water under the sea. I thought it would be really fun to do this, to do this, but you definitely don't have to. You could leave it very plain like it was before, but I thought this really lent itself to the whole water theme that I have going here. So now I'm going to do some coloring using that mermaid for each other stamp set from Lawn Fun. So I've stamped each mermaid twice just because I wasn't sure what colors I would be using and I wanted to sort of play around and um, experiment a little bit, see what colors I liked best. So for this first mermaid, I'm going to be coloring her a little bit like Ariel from the movie. So I'm giving her more pale skin. I'm using, I think it's called flesh color and then also beige. Then I brought in some light carmine for a blush on her cheeks. And the real reason why I wanted to stamp two of her in particular was because I had no idea how to do her, her hair color. And it, it's a good thing I did stamp her twice because my first initial colors that I thought would work didn't really work. So I ended up doing this second color combination, which is actually wine red and I think the color brown. So it's going to give a nice dark red texture to her hair. It's not as bright red as in the movie, but uh, when I was testing out colors, if I was to make it a bright red, it just seems 
really off to me. I think I need a little brown in there. So this was the color combination that I thought worked best. So I'm adding some purple on her seashell top, or should be his seashells. And then I'm using two colors of green for her mermaid tail. This is the same green color combination that I'm going to use on the second mermaid. Put that light shade down and then I'm going in with a darker shade just to bring in a little bit more color. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the second mermaid. And with her, I thought it would be fun to have her with a darker skin tone and dark hair. So I started out with the color oatmeal and then brought in brown. This is the same brown that I used on Ariel's hair. And I'm actually going to shade her entire body all at once to make sure that I get all those colors in there. And then I'm going to bring in a darker brown that I used on that first one. And this is just going to intensify the color on her skin. If you would like to know the exact colors I used for this painting, I will have all the colors listed down below in the video description or in the supply list over at my blog. For her hair, I'm starting with more of a lighter uh, golden brown color. Looked a little bit green actually, and I was concerned, but it actually worked out well paired with the dark brown color. So I'm making sure I'm adding those uh, strokes up to the top of her hair, and then I'll use my paintbrush to spread out that color. This is kind of a fun way to do watercolor hair. I like that you can add those darker streaks in with the marker, and it makes it super easy to get some defined hair structure. So add a little more of those dark areas. Then I'm going to color her top in a cobalt blue color. And then like I said before, I'm going to use the same greens for her mermaid tail. Then took the color violet and painted the seahorses. Painted both, but I really only needed one in the long, in the long term or the long run. Added a little bit of blush onto her cheeks. And then I ended up coloring those goldfish at the bottom, but I didn't actually use them on the card. So I'm using the coordinating dies to cut out all of my images that I'm going to be using on the card. So I cut out both mermaids as well as the seahorse. And now I'm taking those letter dies that I prepped earlier in the video. I'm going to be cutting out the words out of that background C scene that I created. So I first cut out part of, and then I used the word your. And after I had finished cutting out the word your, I was able to use the O and R and replace that in the, in the word world. And then I die cut that one as well. So now I had my entire greeting, the large area, cut out. And I'm going to go ahead and work on the letters that are going to go above the words. So I'm using the Milo's ABC stamp set for this. This is a really fun, really itty bitty stamp set. And I lined up all of those letters on my compact stamp press. It took a little bit of time, but I got it there eventually. And I'm actually going to be heat embossing onto some black cardstock. So this is some Licorice Twist cardstock from Basil prepping the area with an EK Success powder tool. It's an anti-static powder tool that eliminates any of that static cling that would result in embossing powder in areas where I don't want it. I then stamped my greeting in Versamark ink and sprinkled on some Hero Arts white embossing powder. I then used my heat tool to heat set that until it was melted and smooth. And then I cut it down into a narrow strip using my T-square ruler and an X-Acto knife or a craft knife. Okay, I'm going to trim off the end. And then I'm going to use my scissors and create a ribbon end. So I'm doing one cut down the middle and then I did two diagonal lines from the corners to the top of that line that I cut in the center. I'm going to prep my card base before I move on any further. The cardstock I'm using today is Basil Marshmallow cardstock, and I've cut it to be a five and a half by five and a half inch card. I trimmed down my blue watercolor piece so that it's five inches by five inches, and then put some foam adhesive on the back. I made sure to cut some very small, narrow foam tape pieces to fill in all of those gaps in between the letters. Then I'm applying my piece down onto my card base, and it's time to put in all of those little itty bitty centers of those letters. Now this part took a long time, and at one point I was thinking, it would have been easier just to cut out some white letters and adhere those. So I think if I was to make this card again, I would have done that instead. 
and then put some foam tape on the back of that grateful to be a piece and put that on the top of the card. And then put my mermaids onto the card using some foam adhesive and also the seahorse. And then because I was really missing those little fish that I decided not to use, I took the solid fish stamp from the stamp set and stamped that in VersaFine Onyx Black ink just over the top of the blue watercoloring, just on the kind of edges of the card. That added a little bit of interest. I also grabbed some sequins. These are some sequins from Darice. This is the color crystal and it's my favorite color of sequins. This is in the eight millimeter and five millimeter size. And I'm picking those up with a tweezer tool and then squirting out a little bit of some Ranger multi-medium matte. I also took some Ranger glossy accents and coated the mermaid tail and the seashell tops on each of the mermaids, as well as the entire seahorse. This is going to give it some nice shine and I'll show you that in a minute here. So at this point, my card is essentially finished. This is a very time consuming card, but completely worth it. I'm so excited to send it off to one of my friends who also loves the little mermaid, which in my opinion is the best Disney movie ever. So you can see all this, the shine on that card and the shimmer from the sequins. Hope you guys enjoyed this mini series showing you different ways to use Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I'll be back on Monday with a regular card video. Thanks so much for watching. Mm -hmm.